Hello everyone and welcome back to Brick Cats. Today I am reviewing the RZ-2 A-Wing Starfighter designed by Thomas Jenkins and distributed by Brick Vault. As always, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment, or supporting what I do in any other way you see fit. I greatly appreciate it. The RZ-2 is of course the successor to the original trilogy era RZ-1 A-Wing and featured heavily in the opening battle of The Last Jedi. Faster and better armed, the RZ-2 was more than a match for anything but the most advanced starfighters in the First Order's fleet. This is obviously the blue version, but there is also a red as well as a dark green build included when you buy the instructions. Running the vanilla parts list through Bricklink gave me 4 stores and $67 before shipping and tax, or about $91 including shipping and tax. Ultimately, I was able to get this down to around $77 including shipping and tax. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I close out with my overall impression and pricing information in the conclusion. I assume you've bought the instructions or are interested in buying them. I also assume a basic level of familiarity with Bricklink's ordering system and with LEGO nomenclature. I only use genuine LEGO bricks, and I always purchase the instructions. I create these reviews for my own personal enjoyment, and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. The fighter measures 10.5 inches long by 7 inches wide and 3 inches tall, and that's 26.7 by 17.8 by 7.6 centimeters. The RZ-2 encampment was actually smaller than the RZ-1 due to, I guess, technological advances that allowed the engineers to shrink down the electronics. However, if I put this next to the RZ-1 A-Wing from Brick Vault, you can see that the RZ-2 is actually significantly larger. Uh, I'm putting this end-to-end -end right here, uh, so it's a little difficult to see. Well, camera perspective is going to throw this off, but um, trust me, the RZ-2 is about uh, an inch, two or three centimeters longer than the RZ-1 model. So, while the RZ-2 is minifig scale, uh, in the sense that Tally sits just fine inside the cockpit, it's not accurate when compared to the cannon dimensions, that's assuming, again, if you uh, except uh, the Brick Vault RZ-1 as, as accurate as well. It's certainly not a big deal, but I did think it was worth mentioning. The profile of the RZ-2 is also supposed to be more of a continuous taper um, down from about the cockpit to the end. Obviously this is incredibly difficult to achieve with LEGO, so the designer has opted for a long, thin profile that uh, does taper accomplished with the wedge pieces and these assemblies here. Luckily this RZ-2 looks very very good, so any scale inaccuracies are certainly forgivable. And in general the fighter as you can see is mostly smooth due to the tiles and the slopes, but there are a few studs here and there that give it uh, the Lego look and definitely don't take away from the overall appearance. Starting at the very front, you have this little notch that's included, which was apparently used to tow the A-Wing around. And these little Technic connector sections along the edge here give the, uh, give the hull a nice shape, um, transitioning from the wedge pieces that are above and below. This does result in the slightest of gaps from certain angles, right here, right here not the worst thing in the world and usually not noticeable, but this is, in my opinion, an acceptable trade-off. Using the Technic connectors does mean that uh, you aren't able to, or th the designer was not able to represent the concussion missile launchers that are supposed to be right here. I suppose you could use black for maybe two of these, but I think that would actually look too big. So this is one of the few cases where some kind of sticker wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, in my opinion. The hull is accurately shaped, and the blue stripe, blue stripes running back to either side of the cockpit look absolutely fantastic. 
And I especially love how these corners are rounded off by using these curved tiles here, the round quarter brick. And then, even though it's a little difficult to see, the, the plate underneath this white round corner brick is dark blue, so the illusion of having that smooth curve is maintained. And similarly up here, the, the plate underneath is white, so that's a really nice touch. The laser cannons are connected by this hollow stud, and these cannons are reminiscent of the RZ-22 from Rebels, as opposed to the thinner cannons from the RZ-1. A minifigure fits comfortably inside the cockpit. He or she does not stud in, but uh, there's not much room to move there anyway, and the cockpit has some rudimentary controls and some representations of a scope or a screen or a heads-up display or something here. The cockpit itself marries up perfectly to the section just behind. And I really love the inclusion of these two side windows uh, in the back here, which are cam inaccurate, and the little deflector shield generator on the top here. This rear section is really nicely shaped in general. I think there might be supposed there, there might supposed to be like a slight taper as you go back, but obviously that'd be quite difficult to achieve and still have it look good. So I think this is just fine. And another neat thing about the build, uh, this backmost section just kind of sits in here and is held in place by not a traditional connection, but by all the uh, components around it. So that was pretty cool. The fins are properly angled with respect to the vertical, and the hinge connection underneath right here to lock these in place was really impressive to me once I figured out that was how it was supposed to go. And attaching the uh, upper and lower part of the fins themselves, um, this is also a really cool connection. There's a really nice use of this modified plate with the Technic hole that connects to this hollow, or sorry, this, uh, this stud here. And that allows the fins to maintain a two plate thickness as opposed to, well, I guess two plates and like a panel, but mostly a two plate uh, width on both the top and bottom. The light blue gray uh, are specified, but um, I don't think they make this part in dark blue, so you don't have much choice here. Uh, but on the bottom here, I was actually a short one for whatever reason, so I substituted a white, and you know, that looks okay. Over here, you see the light bluish gray, and you know you could. There is some freedom to use off colors here to simulate the, the resistance wear and tear. There are some anti studs on the inside, but this is pretty unavoidable given the two plate thickness of the fins, and I think it's worth keeping them as thin as possible. The engines in general look really good, and I really love how the designer used the Technic pulleys and some wheels to simulate the rearmost ring assembly. I think these two sections here and on the opposite side are actually supposed to be the same diameter as the main engine, so it seems like this could have been bumped out, maybe a, a plate or something like that to maintain the diameter here, but this is a really small nitpicky thing and to be honest I'm not even it was hard for me to find a good picture of the RZ2 online to see if this was um, actually a thing or not. But I like the color details on the inside portions of the engine here. I wasn't a big wasn't as big of a fan of uh, this this black section here. I think this probably should have been gray uh, just because it's a little distracting even though, honestly, not many people are going to notice or care about this. But it just seemed a little out of place given the prevalence of greys elsewhere. Moving to the underside it is mostly smooth, like the top, with just a few studs here and there. And this model does have landing gear that folds up into the fuselage very nicely. The rearmost landing skids fold down just like that, while the front one is hidden underneath this flap here. So the fighter does sit on its own, on its landing gear. Oops, just fine. I will say that depending on the condition of your bar with clip piece, 
depending on the condition of your bar with clip piece, that really determines how much friction you have on these connections. You can see how well, you may be able to see on mine, but mine are pretty loose. They the good thing is these fold backwards, so if you're intending to push this forwards like that, um, they, they kind of lock in place. But it, it does swing up and down pretty easily. But they support the fighter's weight, and it's good enough. I do kind of wish that that uh, nice smooth curve detail for the blue stripe was repeated on the bottom. You can see that it's just a little bit blockier here. I think this could be achieved. There is a uh, black plate underneath there. So if you really wanted to, you could probably change that, but I didn't. And lastly, you might have noticed or have recognized Jarak's standard stand. One unfortunate thing about this model is that it doesn't come with instructions for its own stand. So I repurposed this for for the review just to just so I wouldn't have to hold it the entire time. So if you have any of Jarak's instructions, you can definitely use his stand for it. But I think if I were to make a suggestion for version two, uh, the designer should come up with a stand or repurpose another one or whatever, just because this thing looks really good uh, mounted and at kind of a, a flight angle, as opposed to just sitting flat on a table. So overall, this is a great looking RZ2 A-Wing. If you can get past the minor issues with the scale, I don't really think that's a problem, but some people are sticklers. It's very good looking and the other two versions are extremely good looking as well. Brick Vault's RZ2 requires 185 elements and 612 pieces. The three minifigure utensil ski with hinge, part 6120, specified in white, tend to be quite expensive in white, and I was getting it over a dollar per piece for this element. Substituting the more common dark bluish gray will be much cheaper, as the dark bluish gray version averages about 10 cents. You could also try the version without the hinge, part 99774, which is what I did on these rear ones. There's no functional difference, but uh, again, these are quite inexpensive. And again, if you go with the non-hinged version, the dark bluish gray piece is going to be cheaper than the white. The hinge plate 1x2 with two fingers, part 4276, and the hinge plate 1x2 with three fingers, part 4275, both specified in white, are completely hidden and can be any color. These are used to create this small section with the red stripes on the starboard side here, and these, those hinge pieces um, help this maintain like a, a downward slope. So you can just see that it's slightly flat compared to the other side, which is just the smooth curve, but that's because the hinge pieces are there. You can barely see it, and uh, you definitely can't see the hinge pieces underneath. The two Technic Pin 3L with friction ridges and stop push, part 32054, specified in dark bluish gray. Uh, dark bluish gray is actually, I was surprised that this was a pretty uncommon color for this element. Black is by far the most common, and it should work fine. This piece is used for the barrels of the laser cannons here, and it's mostly covered up by this 1L lift arm right here. Another good substitute is light bluish gray, which is very common as well, and I used, actually used flat silver because for some reason I had two flat silver pin 3L with friction ridges and stop pushes. The 8 brick modified 1x2 with studs on sides, part 52107, are specified in sand blue, but these are completely hidden and can be any color. And these are hidden inside of the main part of the fuselage, right about this area here. The two cylinder 3x6x2 and 2 thirds horizontal ground connections between the interior studs, part 30360, this is the main part of the engine. This is not terribly expensive to begin with, but it is worth noting that the newer version, part 93168, with the square connections between the interior studs will work just as fine, or just as well, if you already have them, or if you want to substitute them in just to see 
what happens to your algorithm results. The Technic Pin 3L with Friction Ridges Part 6558 is specified in black, but the more common blue will work fine. Similarly, the Technic Pin 1 half is specified in blue, Part 4274. This is also perfectly fine in light bluish gray if you have them. That's pretty much it for a short parts section for once. There aren't really any bulk quantities or pieces that are particularly expensive, so I don't think you will save much by getting a subset of these pieces from Pick a Brick. The RC2 was a fairly easy build to follow that took me about 2 hours total without any sorting of the pieces, and with only about 600, in my opinion you'll spend more time sorting them than you will hunting for each piece when you need it. There were a couple of very minor viewing angle problems that mostly showed up when you're inserting the studs of slot bricks into Technic bricks with holes, but you figure this out after the first couple of times and it isn't too much of an issue. I think there could be some minor instructions clarifications to make this more obvious and therefore make it more accessible, but again, like I said, minor issue. The build is fun overall, and there are some, some very interesting build techniques and clever connections. This model is reasonably sturdy, but there are some weak areas that unfortunately aren't in the gravest places. The fighter is a bit difficult to grip in the standard spot just because these fins are a little narrow, but once you get your hand in there, this can hold up to pretty much any level of swooshing that you can reasonably throw at it. The good news um, is that anywhere you're likely to grip with your, your thumb and your fingers underneath, it's all pretty solid in this area, so you can put as much pressure as you need to to maintain a, a steady grip here. The laser cannons, the hollow stud connection between this piece here and the hull itself is actually pretty strong, but uh, you've seen multiple times that this is the most common thing to, to pop off. And this happens with slightly annoying regularity, but um, Luckily this is pretty easy to get back on. The main stability issue comes at the nose of the fighter, and this is exacerbated by lack of a stand, as the fighter does sit kind of awkwardly if you don't put the landing gear down. So basically it's resting at this end on one of the, the weakest parts of the model. The main top and bottom slope sections of the hull are the weak area. And these assemblies are basically just one layer of tiles or plates connected by some turntable bases or, or whatever else. There's also a pretty large empty space in between these two sections. That does have the advantage of being able to hold the, the forward landing skid, but it also makes this rather weak. So if I pry the section open, I can show you. So this is what you're dealing with inside. So you can see that there's no real support right in the middle here. And this is a little bit tenuous all through there. So I actually added these inverted slopes to secure these headlight plates here because when you try and push all of this into this clip piece here, it's very difficult if you don't have any reinforcement there. And I also added this 2x6 plate because, as specified, this bottom section especially is very weak, and I, I literally could not get it to get in place, or when you tried to push that bar connection in there, everything would just kind of fall apart. And it seemed to be lacking some kind of reinforcement across the width of it here, so that white plate was added by me. So it's not too difficult to see the changes that you need to make, and this plate by no means has to be white, it's pretty hidden. I just think that this bottom section especially, uh, as specified, is not viable. So you're going to have to find some way to make it a little stronger, uh, otherwise I think you'll be a little bit frustrated. I didn't have as much problems with the top just because the connections are slightly easier. On the bottom, it was just that bar connection that has a lot of uh, takes a lot of force to get in, and this assembly just can't hold up to it. Uh, like I said, the landing gear is very stable and it holds the weight of the fighter just fine. 
So lack of a stand, it's a nice, t the stand is definitely a nice to have. And like I said, for appearance purposes, I think look especially good. But for stability purposes, if you don't wanna go to the trouble of buying extra parts for a stand, you can use the landing gear and that works out just fine. And last but not least, these side panels inside the cockpit here, the connection is a bracket piece that is face down as we're looking at it here. And as you can see on mine, this has come loose. There's not really a good way for me to fix that, unfortunately. Nope, I'm trying to get it to connect in there. So I'm gonna have to do some significant disassembly to get that to work again. But minor issue, you're probably not gonna see it if you are just putting this on display. So I can just put the cockpit on there and cover it up and not think about it again. In conclusion, this is a very good looking model, and while it has some stability problems and just a few minor issues with the instructions, I think that this is accessible to most levels of builders without being too challenging or too frustrating. It is very cool how some of the sub-assemblies come together, and even better, this model is not very expensive as far as mocks goes. Like I said earlier, the Initial parts list gave me 4 stores and $67 before shipping and tax, or about $91 including shipping and tax. If you substitute the white skis for dark bluish gray, you change the sand blue 2x1 modified bricks to any color, you change the hinge plates to any color, hinge plates to any color, excuse me, and you change those 3 Altectic pins with stop to light bluish gray. The algorithm gave me 4 stores and $53 without shipping and tax, or about $77 including shipping and tax. Again, this is for the dark blue version. The interior parts should be mostly the same for the dark green and the red version as well. So I believe you would have similar savings making the same substitutions on the alternate versions. Instructions for the RZ2 A-Wing cost $15.99 from BrickVault, and there will be a link in the description to BrickVault's page where you can buy them if you so choose. Thanks as always for watching my review of Thomas Jenkins and BrickVault's RZ2 A-Wing. If you've built the model you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, cover please leave them below in the comments. Remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, or follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, and I hope you see you back next time.